All right, buckle up, because this one's a doozy. We're diving deep into the case of Lois Reese, the so-called killer grandma. Oh, yeah, this deep dive request came in hot from a listener, and I gotta say, it's a wild one. Totally. We're talking about a seemingly ordinary grandma from Minnesota who ends up at the center of a nationwide manhunt. And get this, there's way more to it than just another true crime story. Your sources, they really dig deep. Oh, absolutely. We're about to unpack some serious layers here. Gambling, alleged abuse, even a victim who looked eerily similar to Lois herself. It's like right off the bat, this case throws you a curveball. You have this image of a grandma, right? Someone you picture baking cookies, not committing crimes. Right, total grandma vibes. And that's where we're gonna kick things off. Lois's life before the murders, back in Blooming Prairie, Minnesota. Small town life, everyone knows everyone, imagine that. And Lois, she was a regular community member, loved by her family. Totally, the picture of normalcy. Except, well, your sources paint a bit of a different picture, you know, like maybe things weren't so peachy under the surface. Yeah, it's like a puzzle, trying to piece together what led to such drastic actions. And one piece we can't ignore is the whole gambling thing. And it wasn't just casual bingo nights either. Right. Her own son, Brayden, even talked about her struggles with gambling, hinted that it caused some serious family drama. Not exactly the picture-perfect life she projected. So different from that doting grandma persona. Exactly. And remember that investigation back in 2015? The accusations of her stealing a whole bunch of money from her own disabled sister. Oh, wow. Yeah. I almost forgot about that. That's a pretty big deal. Huge. Especially since she was running a daycare out of her home at the time. You'd think someone entrusted with kid would have a squeaky clean record. It really makes you wonder, was she trying to keep up appearances, overcompensate for something? Maybe, maybe. And then, boom, March 2018. Everything changes. The murder of her husband, David Reese. And this is where the story takes a dark turn, my friend. Lois, she claims they had this huge fight that David actually handed her the gun and told her to kill herself. Heavy stuff. And that's when she admits to shooting him. Not once, but twice. Okay, so this is where your sources get really interesting. Because on the surface, it might seem like an open and shut case, right? Like a woman pushed to her breaking point. Right, but there's got to be more to it, right? Exactly. See, when you dig deeper, things get a little murky. Like, what doesn't quite add up? Well, the prosecution argued premeditation. They pointed to all these financial moves Lois made right after the shooting, like she had a plan in place all along. Oh, so was this a heat of the moment thing fueled by years of alleged abuse, like she said? Or was it ice cold, calculated, and made to look like something it wasn't? Now those are the million dollar questions. It's like trying to solve a puzzle with half the pieces missing. Exactly. It's a reminder that sometimes we can never truly know what goes on inside someone's head, especially when it comes to something as extreme as murder. So true. And what happens next just throws another log on the fire. Mm. Lois, she doesn't just lay low. She goes full on fugitive. Oh, yeah. And not just hiding out either. This is like straight out of Hollywood. She takes on a whole new persona, starts hopping from state to state. It's kind of gutsy, you gotta admit. Forging her dead husband's signature to get cash, showing her face on casino cameras while everyone's looking for her. Bold move, for sure. And that trail leads her straight to Florida, where she meets Pamela Hutchinson. This, I think, is where things get really unsettling. Absolutely. This is where those movie comparisons really start to hit home. Yeah. So Lois, she befriends Pamela at this timeshare complex, and all the sources point to this really eerie detail. They look alike. Like really alike. Hair, build, even their skin tone. It's almost like they could be sisters or something. It's bizarre. And this isn't just a coincidence. A few days later, Pamela's found dead, shot and killed. Tragic. And the authorities, they connect Lois to the crime pretty quickly. It becomes clear she didn't just steal Pamela's identity. She stole her life. Chilling. The level of planning involved, the way she supposedly wormed her way into Pamela's life, it makes you wonder, what was the motivation? Was it all about getting a new identity to escape the law? Was there a financial angle? Or was there something darker going on, something more sinister? It's really hard to say for sure. Yeah, the sources leave that part open-ended. But there's one thing that always gets me about this case. It's how Lois reacts, or doesn't react, to Pamela's murder. Hmm. It's like, that crime doesn't weigh on her the same way. That's an interesting observation. You're right. She expresses remorse for killing her husband, but when it comes to Pamela, there's this coldness, this distance. It's eerie. 
adds another layer to an already complex situation. Totally. So now we've got two murders, a fugitive on the loose, and a whole bunch of unanswered questions. And the story's just getting started. Lois is run from the law. Well, it's got a few more twists and turns. Last we saw Lois, the so-called killer grandma, she was on the lam, leaving a trail of questions and chaos in her wake. It's amazing how this case grabbed everyone's attention, this seemingly average grandma living a double life. Totally, and the media really ran with that killer grandma angle. I mean, can you blame them? It's not every day you see a grandma on the FBI's most wanted list, but it makes you think about how we profile criminals, right? 100%. Because while everyone else saw a sweet grandma, she was running from two murders. Exactly. And get this, the sources say Lois actually used that to her advantage. What do you mean? She blended right in, acting like any other tourist. No way. While on the run for murder. Yep. Even stopped at more casinos along the way. Can you imagine? It's like she was almost taunting the authorities. Bold move, Lois. But even the wildest rides have to end eventually. And hers ends at a restaurant in Texas. Texas! Can you believe it? Talk about a plot twist. Right. Like, just a stone's throw from Mexico. But... That's it. Game over. Busted for a burger. Wild. Seriously. And in the end, she pleads guilty. Both murders. David in Minnesota, Pamela in Florida. Now she's serving two life sentences. No parole. And while she did say she was sorry about killing her husband, the Pamela thing, that's still a head scratcher. It really is. Why the different reaction between the two murders? It's like, where's the remorse for Pamela? It's the million dollar question. Was Pamela just collateral damage? A way to disappear? Or was there something more to it? It's crazy to think about how two drastically different sides can exist within one person. The loving grandma, the volunteer, and then this. It's a stark reminder, isn't it? You never truly know what's going on beneath the surface. Remember what the documentary called her? I'm not a monster. Whoa, yeah. yeah. Makes you wonder, are any of us capable of something like that? It's a chilling thought. Definitely makes you think twice about that nice old neighbor. But hey, that's why we love these deep dives, right? They make you question everything. Truth. And if you're looking for even more on Lois Russ, check out the HBO documentary, I'm Not a Monster, The Lovis Russ Murders. It's a wild ride. Until next time, keep those true crime minds sharp and stay curious because you never know what dark corners we'll be exploring next.